.NET 7 applications must be updated now as they're at risk to known bugs and security vulnerabilities. Coming up, we'll show you how to update to the latest .NET version. But first, let's ask ourselves why we need to update in the first place. .NET 7 was set to end of life or EOL on the 14th of May 2024. What this means is that Microsoft no longer provides fixes, updates or online technical assistance for any versions with this status. This is critical because if someone wants to flag a bug or security vulnerability with it, we would not expect Microsoft to provide a fix and as a result it would not be updated. The solution for this is to update to a version that is currently supported. Microsoft's .NET Core support policy page provides the current versions that are currently supported. Microsoft releases a new major version of .NET every November and it alternates between standard term support or long term support. STS support versions are given 18 months of support whereas LTS versions are given a full 3 years of support. The type of support a .NET version is given is based on its version number. If it's given an odd number it's given standard term support. Whereas if it's an even number it's given long term support. As the version of .NET 7 is an odd number, it was only given 18 months of support, whereas the version of .NET 6 is an even number, so it was given LTS and has support for a further 6 months after the .NET 7 support was ended, despite its original release being 12 months before. Why should you update? Microsoft state in their .NET Core support policy that out of support .NET versions may put your applications, application data and computing environment at risk. As well as the vulnerabilities, newer versions have updates to .NET and C-Sharp which are not included in .NET 7. New features for .NET 8 and C-Sharp 12 included key services and primary constructors amongst others. And if you're using Azure Agents for CI and CD YAML pipelines, there is a high chance it will remove out of support versions from their agents in the near future if it hasn't done so already. You may be able to download an out of support version of .NET onto your Azure Agent but it's going to add an extra task to your pipeline and it's just easier to update. So how do you update? We've done a search for .NET versions and we're going to select .NET downloads. We have a list of all the supported versions. At time of recording .NET 9 is in preview mode so we're not going to select that one. .NET 6 is long term support but it's currently in maintenance and the support is ending very soon. Instead we're going to select .NET 8, it's long term support and it's active. We're going to install 8.0.5. We look further down, it's included in Visual Studio 17.10.0. So that's the version we need to update Visual Studio to as a minimum. To update Visual Studio, we go to Help and check for updates. It will state the version we need to update to, and we simply click on the Update button to update it. Updating Visual Studio should download the latest .NET SDK version. We can do a check in the PowerShell window. We run .NET hyphen hyphen list hyphen SDKs. These are all the SDKs installed on our machine, one of them being 8.0.300. This corresponds to the SDK version for 8.0.5. If your SDK version isn't listed, you'll need to install it from here, depending on whether you're using Linux, Mac OS or Windows. Make sure you install the SDK and not the runtime. We're now ready to update our application. Our solution has two projects, we need to update both of them. We right click on it and go to edit project file. We find target framework and we change the target framework to the version that we're updating to. We're updating to .NET 8 so we select NET 8.0. We do the same for the other project, we change the target framework to NET 8.0. If you're using Docker you'll need to update the Docker file. Change the ASP.NET Core runtime to 8.0. And do the same for the .NET SDK, change it to 8.0. One other thing you'll need to do is to update the NuGet packages. In Visual Studio go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Select the Updates tab, select All Packages. These are all the packages that need updating and press Update. With our application updated we can now publish it. To do that we run .NET space publish and we've done a dir command and we can see that that's the csproj file so that's the project that we're publishing I'm going to call it around the code.net upgrade.csproj we're going to include the parameter of c i'm going to set that to release o which is the folder that we're publishing it to we're going to call that publish 
and we're going to mark it as self-contained. That's published our application. In our publish folder, we have all the files we need, including all the Microsoft runtimes and libraries, and they are contained within the publish folder. If we don't wish to publish it as self-contained, we can remove the self-contain parameter from the command. When it's published, there's significantly less files, and that's because we're not including the .NET runtimes and libraries. If you're not publishing your project as self-contained, you'll need to install the ASP.NET Core runtime onto your server. It's supported on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. If you're using iOS, you'll need to install the hosting bundle. And the reason being is that it recommends to install it as it includes the .NET runtime and support. Another benefit of upgrading .NET is that you can take advantage of the new features it has to offer. View this video playlist next to watch videos of the newest features of .NET, C Sharp and Blazor. You'll be amazed at some of the new features it has to offer.